What is going on everybody? I hope you're having a good weekend. Today I'm going to show you how you can kind of turn a really like simple intro into a quite exciting intro that will really lead into the song and just you know make the song sound kind of a bit more interesting than you might actually think so. So the song I'm using today is obviously one of mine. It's Wake Up from the Recollection. I'll put a link down in the description if you guys want to listen to that. I'm sure you will. And basically, I chose this because I think it's got the most interesting intro. And the thing is that, I mean, it doesn't look like there's a lot going on. I seem to remember me spending a lot of time on this, uh, especially this part here. The differences between this song and any other song that I think I did on that album is... So, like, in the song, I think after, actually, Reality, it's kind of just an eight-bar loop. I play it twice, which is, like, huge. And then it's got, like, a vocal line and you know, boom, then you're into the song. And I mean, that's all right. It's an intro, but it's not very interesting. So here, if you've forgotten what it sounds like, I'll just play it for you. So there we go, I've got the fill at the end, and I've only got about, I think, six things in here. Uh, I've obviously grouped all the drums into kind of one thing, because they're all played together. And there, I think you'd be able to hear it if you listen with headphones or speakers. I've managed to fit quite a lot of variation into eight bars, because this is only eight bars, and it leads into the, you know, the whole main thing. With the bass and all that. But yeah, I've got the low pass the kind of vocal line, this siren thing, some scratches in the drums, and then a few fills and rises, but those aren't totally important here. It's mainly what I'm doing with the automation is the thing. So if I open up the automation thing by pressing A on the keyboard, you can see that obviously, like over here, this is just the main song. I've obviously got a few things going on here, but there's a lot of volume and panning, and then also up at the top is on what's on the drum bus, and I'm gonna show you that. So I'll kind of talk you from simple to complicated. So I think the simplest is what's going on down at the bottom here. This is just the scratch, and it's just the volume. So throughout the track, uh, throughout the intro, you'll if you're looking here on the side of the screen, you, you can just see the volume fader going up as it goes through. Same here on all of these things, I put volumes fades so that they obviously just come in. And those are quite simple to do. You just kind of pick your start volume, pick your end volume. And then another cool thing you could do, if you go up here, you can go to automation curve tool. And if you uh, click on it, it actually curves it. So you can kind of change how quickly it comes in and stuff rather than it just being a straight line. I quite like doing it. It just makes it sound a tiny bit more real, especially if you're doing it over a, like a long amount of time and it just makes it real and more subtle. So the next thing obviously I've got is some pan controls. Now what this does is if you look over here, this is the pan control. When you play the track through, obviously I drew all these in because obviously there, there's quite a few just hand-drawn points in there. It's a sample but it's coming from ear to ear. So I just thought the, I mean, it's a really boring sample. It's just some kind of siren or like screaming guitar or something. But if you add all the volume and then the pan, you can kind of, it makes you concentrate more and follow it around. So that's why I put it in. Um, same here, there's some volume, but then here we get a taste of what kind of stuff I'm doing. So obviously this is the fill taken from Dr. Dre and what I've got in it here is just some delay. So I'm sending them to my delay buses. That's where you can hear the, you can hear it ping ponging from each ear again to make it more interesting and just fill some more space. But then here I actually put in a kind of EQ thing. Um, and what this is, is just the high cut frequency starting kind of low, I think around here and then moving out. So when I play it, you'll be able to see this pink sector move. And that's because um, I just wanted it kind of really simple at the start, but then 
but then obviously that open hi-hat is quite high frequency so I needed it to be open like that and I didn't want to put an abrupt cut because I obviously could put like a right angle in there but obviously that would sound a bit jarry so I decided not to and that's kind of what we're getting on to here the drum bus is definitely the most that like the thing I did most to and this is kind of where you can get a bit creative because obviously it's over a whole eight bars let's just start from the top of the list here so volume I kind of want it fading out a bit because if you fade it out it obviously makes a huge contrast to the drums you've got coming in here so that's why when they're not playing I just quickly bang it up again to uh, where they are at kind of minus three you can just see it flick down there uh, that's not really very interesting but here is where I've got certain things going off. So what I'm trying to do here on the drum bus is start with nothing really being able to be heard in the highs. And then as we go through, sweeping down into the lows. So you get like a nice kind of, it's a bit like when you hear a kick through like a club wall or something. So I wanted to do that. So what you do for that, you use your low passes and your high passes or your low cuts and your high cuts. So obviously they're like backwards. Uh, you know what I mean, if they're passes, because it lets everything in the low past and cuts the highs. So, if we skip to bar one, I've got every single thing cut out. And you can do that by selecting, uh, when, you go into, when you put an EQ on, so here's my EQ, you can edit every single one of these parameters here. So obviously I just look for high cut frequency and low cut frequency. Then I've got a bypass there to make sure it doesn't randomly come on in the end of the track, but that's not very hard to do. So here I've obviously selected low cut frequency. And I've just dragged it up to 20,000 because that's obviously the highest it can go. Then I kind of think, okay, well, where do I want it to end? Well, I still don't want to be able to really hear the absolute weight of the kick because it's an intro, not a drop. And so you can hear the clicks of the kick if I play it see around there around 300 so I kind of want it to come to like three four hundred so that's what I do put another point in there use that curve thing to make it more smooth more realistic as I said before you see there it's only I mean we don't need that see there it's only two points easy to do same thing down here the high cut frequency uh, I wanted to keep it in a bit here so that obviously we didn't get too much of a like a tight kind of filter thing so i think what's that that's like ten thousand hertz that's half the thing that that seems quite appropriate there so you know it starts to come in once i get around 2k something like that this one i didn't put any curve on because obviously it's just very quiet and subtle like that and then you just obviously put in a few points here i wanted it to flick back up just in case i forgot to do like a bypass thing but when you play it you'll be able to see and here, obviously, because it's all about hearing, um, that as they follow the lines, you'll be able to see all the filters moving. and then it fully comes in. So by the end, we've pretty much taken out most of the hi-hat. And you can only hear the kind of weight of the snare and it makes it sound like everything's kind of maybe getting further away or going underwater or something, I don't know. I just thought it sounded cool. And obviously you can kind of almost do like a safety thing where if you don't want to use any of these filters anymore, you just put on the bypass and stuff like that. Obviously turn everything off and uh, then I don't turn them back on again till I do all the outro stuff, but that could be for another video. It's basically the same, but in reverse. Yeah, that's what's going on there. Obviously I put in more panning over the whole song, some more volume flicks and stuff, a bit more of that, a bit of that, just you know, slight adjustments of the levels of most things. But yeah, that's kind of how I thought the intro should be, you know, livened up a bit. Now that you've seen everything, try and now listen for it so that you can see what different and what difference it makes. So I can feel it. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. 
So you can only hear the hi-hats. Now you can hear more snare. Now you've got the siren coming ear to ear. You start to not hear the hi-hats and hear more of the kick. Like that. And we're back to the full, nice, full kick and everything. So yeah, if you want to listen to the full track or even the full album, if you love my music that much, you can uh, check the link down in the description. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully this gave you some ideas of how you can use automation over a very small space of time. Eight bars is quite a lot to fit in. It doesn't, it doesn't sound that long when you're like fully into it uh, compared to obviously the rest of the song. But um, yeah, hopefully that helped, gave you some new ideas. So if, if it did, drop a like. If it really inspired you, subscribe. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.